world. So, Charbucks, great to see you. Welcome to Embedded World Foundries 2022. As you can see, our booth is much bigger than it was two years ago. We have a lot more demos, we have a lot more partners, the business has grown. But most importantly, we're probably Europe's largest IoT secure Linux company now and growing at 20% plus a quarter. We have some major OEMs that are working with us. We have some companies like Arduino, which are shipping their first ever Linux products. But things that we can demonstrate on our booth, the first and most exciting is the, the first and most exciting is an electric scooter. And so this comes from Unu Motors, the screen, the power monitor, the motor control, all work on Linux, all work on our secure Linux. They have full OTA capabilities engaged, they have full security. So this is some of the unique features that we can bring to not just automotive, but any product, all the way from vacuum cleaners, smart shipping containers, through to various other devices in the industry. So are you fixing the problem of doing uh, secure updates on all the IoT devices? We're not just fixing the problem with secure updates. All the problem in IoT at the moment is around how you can get a platform that goes from a vertical solution currently, design your own, to a horizontal solution where you get best in class. You look at the way phones developed, they really developed after Android came out. What we're doing is producing a platform where any developer, any OEM then can control their own data, add security to it, add OTA, and do full continual integration and testing in the security for 10, 20, 30 years. This has not been done in IoT before. And um, you have a big presence here at the, um, at the Embedded World. Uh, here you have a bunch of partners. Uh, what are we seeing here on the back? So, on what the, you can, what you can see over the back is a whole pile of our partners. We're on, a lot of logos there. we're on all these logos. We're on five or six booths. You'll see us on the ARM booth. You'll see us on the ST booth, the TI booth, the Xilinx booth, the AdLink booth. We have demos and partners now everywhere around this show. Two years ago we were a small little booth, now we're a much bigger company, now we're probably Europe's largest preeminent Linux company in the industry and we're growing because our OEMs are really seeing value as we bring to market. Uh, what are your customers saying in terms of uh, realizing their, their future requests and getting everything that they want in there? Well, you look at all of this, the industry's changing over the next few years. People want to put products in the market for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. They need security now that can be updated and changed and upgraded over a lifetime. So that's why OTA becomes important. And we're seeing OEMs going, I want to control my data, not give it to the big cloud guys. I want to be able to have security now and in the future. I want to have critical CVEs that really develop with my business. What we're really seeing is a change in mentality from do-it-yourself to having best-in-class solutions, and that's what we're that's what we're bringing to the industry. And how so, you manage so to do it? <laughs> Hi, Charbax. Nice to see you again at Embedded World 2022. Uh, it's really nice to see everybody here. We've got a bunch of new demos. Um, we've got a big stand, and we're showing one of our new partners, Arduino as a mini fleet of Arduino Portenta X8s, which are professional devices. These are for industrial IoT. Uh, they're industrial rated. They have security, hardware security elements. We have an Intel NUC running our platform that's doing recognition of pedestrians and tracking pedestrians as they walk past our stand. The Arduinos are doing sensors. Um, they have sensors for CO2, sound pressure, temperature, humidity, and they're recording those continuously through the show. 
and um, we have a continuous update where we're actually updating the operating system firmware. So you boot on ARM and trusted execution environment, we're updating all of the software on the device uh, over the air and we're continuously doing that. We've done 342 over the air updates today, as you can see on the screen. And of course, I think Ian has showed you the UNU scooter that we have. Um, this is made by UNU Motors in Germany, <coughs> and they have a fleet of devices that use our software and our platform, uh, and they can over, over the air update these, these bikes over the air, so very cool. How did you organize to have all these uh, skilled guys uh, involved in taking the latest um, versions of the software that you're using, making sure that they are even better improving your thing and yeah, pushing so everything out. You remember we, we've uh, spent a lot of time together at Lenaro. Um, we spun foundries out of Lenaro and now we have a very talented group of engineers both on the engineering side at the uh, on, on the core Linux operating system and firmware but also on the cloud side and, and what we're doing is we're providing cloud tooling to manage the uh, development, deployment, and uh, lifetime maintenance of IoT and edge devices. And this helps our customers get to market faster. It gives them better security because it's all built in with secure over the air updates uh, and provides lifetime maintenance and a much lower lifetime software cost. So we're pretty excited. We've got uh, design wins uh, across the industry from tier one companies including Schneider Electric to exciting startups building things like smart shipping containers and, and robotic vacuum cleaners. So uh, those last two strange years you've been busy? We've been crazy busy in these last couple of years and we've been very lucky because we started the company five years ago as a distributed company. So uh, we operate in U UK, Netherlands, uh, France, Germany, Spain, uh, Brazil, and the United States. Um, and we've been able to keep working um, through the last couple of years, but it's really nice to be at a show and an event like this again. It's and strange to see other people, no? It's great to see you again. It is strange Have you been to, to some other events of already? I've been, I started a little bit of business travel at the end of last year. Um, I'm lucky enough to be US and UK citizens, so I was able to go backwards and forwards to the US a little bit. Um, but things have really started to pick up again this year. And um, on the wall there is some graphic demonstrating a little yeah, bit what you're talking so about. Yeah, we so have, we have a couple of big graphics. This one is showing essentially that we're providing platform as a service software from the cloud. Uh, to manage your entire software lifecycle from the beginning of developing the OS to actually managing the device over the air. So we start with choosing hardware, we help with software development, we have tooling for continuous integration and testing, how to get to secure manufacturing, how to actually secure devices when you start manufacturing them and then provisioning and managing these devices through their lifetime and updating them through their entire lifetime. And, and accelerating time to market, increasing security, reducing costs. And then on this one are some of our partners. Um, there's, a, there's a big ecosystem building in the industry around what we're doing. So uh, a combination of SOC vendors, ODMs, and services partners are helping us establish Foundry's factory as, and, and what we're doing in terms of Linux and the Linux micro platform as a kind of standard platform for IoT and edge devices. So I think we've made a lot of progress since we last saw you. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's also sounding impressive that many of the uh, partners are having your demos also. Yeah, I hope you get a chance to go and see the uh, ARM demo. They're, they're demonstrating Project Cassini um, on a sort of wall of boards from different SOC vendors. So one of the great things about what we're doing is we're creating this platform that's cross-vendor. So you can use NXP or ST or uh, Xilinx or NVIDIA um, devices and several others 
and uh, you can choose any cloud. You can use private cloud, public cloud. Uh, what you do with your data is your own. We're taking care of the core low-level platform and we're doing it across the industry. All right. And uh, how many guys do you have around in your booth? Oh, here we have... Bring a brick team. We, B we've bought a strong team. We have seven here, but we're also simultaneously, uh, simultaneously at Embedded Linux Conference in Austin in Texas. So some of the technical team are over there at the same time. Um, but uh, yeah, we're excited to be here. Maybe uh, Tyler's going to speak about some stuff? Tyler's going to talk to you. Um, George gave so you what off. What you've been up to in uh, the last couple of years? We've been building this company out. Uh, Foundries, I think George probably gave you a pretty good overview of that. And uh, we've been doing some really neat stuff on security, uh, secure elements, trying to make uh, Linux platforms more secure and more updatable. So uh, are, you do, are you like in a groundbreaking Linux security level of integration? Uh, I don't know if it would be groundbreaking. Um, I think it's all components that we've had you know, for a long time um, that we're just pulling together, integrating, making sure it works because that's half the battle of security is that it does it actually work. Um, and then helping productize that solution and, and helping customers get to market fast. Uh, so what are the kind of uh, tech things you, could, you would like to show maybe? Yeah, so uh, we have a really neat demo here. Uh, let me see if I can find the controller. But in this upper right-hand screen here, we have OpenVINO. You can see it's tracking all the pedestrians. Like if you look at the, the video right now, it's identifying human beings and then it's, uh, it's tracking uh, their vector of, of movement. Um, and so it's able to track, you know, hundreds of people walking by our booth every day. Um, and it's, again, it's not even just ARM, it's running on Intel. Um, so we, we have, you know, ARM support, ARM32 support, Intel support, um, MIPS, RISC-V, we have all of that now. So uh, to bring your architecture, we probably have a solution for you. Uh, what are the stories of some of those things you've been uh uh, uh, sending back to the community and the open source in yeah. the last couple of years. So we've been doing a lot of op OptE work and we've been upstreaming a lot of that. So that's all around the security parts. So we upstreamed a couple of I2C drivers for different security elements on different platforms. And uh, you know that's been really good. We've got a lot of people interested in the work that we're doing. Uh, and the vendors really appreciate that too because they should do that as well and, and they see us doing it. So they're happy about that. All right. Um, how about your colleagues? Somebody in Brazil? Yeah, so we got a lot. Our Brazil team's grown quite a bit. So we're at 32 people now. I think last time we spoke, we were maybe six or seven. So um, yeah, we're growing. Got a lot, lot more customers. Uh, our Brazilian team, we've added three or four folks from Brazil. Um, and yeah, I think mostly Brazilian majority at this point. And you're the CTO. I am the CTO. Yep. So you interview everybody that gets hired. I do, uh, yeah, I usually let them go through the tech leads, um, and then I'm kind of one of the final. So if, you, if I'm interviewing you, you most likely are uh, uh, in the final decision phase of being hired, but yeah. And you're still hiring? Uh, we are still hiring, uh, really kind of niche, niche roles right now. So we do customer support and, and security. You know, those are the two areas that we're focusing on right now. And you know, customer support is actually embedded engineering, you know, working with our customers, helping them solve the, their solutions. So it's actually quite a, a fun and challenging job. And um, uh, these guys, some of these guys that you're working with, you know, for many years from the Linaro? Oh yeah, no, we, it's funny walking around here. You see many familiar faces, in fact, you know, Lenaro, um, obviously, I don't think they have a booth here, but there's some presence uh, around, but there's lots of people at ARM uh, that you recognize, but we've all kind of mi migrated to different companies now. So uh, you know, that, that whole Lenaro crew is seeding the industry uh, and, and kind of, you know, creating companies of their own and going to work for new companies. So it's been exciting to see that. Uh, are you tired a little bit of working just of our video chat? I'm joking, but uh, there's been yeah, a lot of that in the last couple years, right? It feels good to be back in person. In fact, I think the last time I saw you, you were at my house, and we were interviewing in my that backyard. That was before the COVID. It was over before the COVID, so it's good to be back. Uh, it's great to see people. I feel like the energy's back again, right? Uh, and people are you know, willing to talk and wanting to, to talk about what we do here at Foundries and you know, how we can collaborate. Is this your first trade show? Oh, no, so I, I come to Embedded World all the time, but that was pre-pandemic, so this is no, my... I mean, I mean yeah. since. Yeah, yeah, this is the first years. first trade show we've been to since the pandemic. Since yeah. 2020. Yep, been a long right. time. And what's next? I hear some guys are in Austin. 
Yeah, so we have a team in Austin. We have uh, at least three guys in Austin, I believe. Uh, so we're building out there, uh, United States. Uh, we have guys in Portugal. Um, we got lots of folks in Ukraine, obviously. They're in a tough situation right now. So uh, it's been great, um, you know, being able to work with them and, and the way they contribute. So, uh, yeah, that's a hard thing for them to go through, but they are, are pulling their weight and, and being awesome engineers. So can't ask for much more than that. I like uh, your camera. Is this a new camera? Ukraine uh, has pretty much kind of like some of the best engineers, right? Outside of Seattle. Yeah, well, I mean, no, and, and to be honest, they're very hardworking people um, and they're very prideful in their country. So, you know, the, that combination, you know, they, they, they forge really strong engineers um, and they're great to work with. So we couldn't do it without them, that's for sure. There was, there's a couple, few guys from Ukraine in Linaro before, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and, and so I'm sure that's disrupted, you know, some, you know, the, the, the coordination there to some extent. But, you know, all of our Ukrainian employees are in contact with us and still working. And so, you know, the, the situation is tough, obviously, and they can't be 100 percent focused on what we do. But, you know, for the most part, they're they're pulling their weight and, and contributing and they're awesome people. And, you know, I wish their families the best. Cool. Awesome. So with you and uh, with your colleagues, I'll be going around some other booths later. All right. And showing some. What, do you, what did you think of our scooter? Oh, did, did Ian cool. show you the scooter? Yeah, let's, let's talk. Let's talk more about it. Yeah. So this is an Unu Motor scooter. This runs two IMX6 uh, MPUs inside of it. It's a fully electric scooter. And a scooter needs to be. So it's, here's the internet. battery right here. You can see inside. And it's hot swappable, so you can put another secondary battery in here and then swap the battery. How much you can ride with one battery? What's that? You can ride like a bunch with one battery. Um, you know, I, I haven't got to ride it a whole bunch. I rode it from Nuremberg to here. Uh, it goes about 50 or so kilometers an hour, um, you know, max speed. Uh, but it seems like it could get pretty good range. Uh, I think this thing has 712 kilometers on it right now. Um, I would assume you probably get at least uh, 50 kilometers out of uh, a battery like this, maybe more. And I guess some of the feature you could do is, in theory, is like bike sharing. Uh, yeah, well, and, and what's neat is that this is fully over-the-air updatable, right? So it's got a cellular modem on it, and it's managed, all the telemetry data is managed through the cellular networks. So, and, and aesthetically, it's really nice. I think they've done a good job on the, on the mechanical engineering on this as well. So props to UNU. Oh, and UNU Motors is hiring for an embedded uh, software engineer. So if you're an embedded engineer and listening to this, go to UNUMotors.com, go to careers, <coughs> and uh, check them out. Are they in Italy? Uh, no, they're in Germany. They're actually here uh, in, in Germany. So we picked this up in Nuremberg uh, and they allowed us to have it at the show. So how many cool projects are happening with the foundries, factory and everything? <laughs> Is it like a ton now? Yeah, there's a ton of products. I mean, you can see our, our ecosystem here, right? I mean, we're working with just about everybody in the industry that builds a chip. Um, and then we're working with their end customers on their products, making sure that they're secure, they're updatable and they run the latest software. Cool. All right. Are so I'll see you later and let's go yeah, on the, the show.